Okay, so let's get into some stuff about the Montreal Canadiens, and it's honestly kind of weird trying to understand this entire picture that Mark Bergevin is probably trying to form here. So the biggest piece of news with the Habs that we have seen in the media has been the trade that they made with the Carolina Hurricanes for defenseman Joel Edmondson. Now this was somewhat of a big deal, not really, because quite literally the assets involved were not really all too big. A late pick and a guy who was going to be a UFA who probably would not have signed with the Carolina Hurricanes anyway, getting traded to Montreal just for the rights for them to go try to sign him to a contract first. It really wasn't all too big of a deal, but because it's the Montreal Canadiens, we kind of know that everybody likes to take these things and make them bigger than they really appear to be. So now the Canadiens have themselves a guy who is a UFA in Joel Edmondson. And reports recently came out that it looks like the Montreal Canadiens are going to be able to sign Edmondson to a contract. It's said over here by Francois Gagnon that it is imminent that they will sign a contract. It should be for between three to five years with an AAV in the 3.5 to $4 million range. Now, okay, that's a lot. First and foremost, that is a lot for a Joel Edmondson guy who, let's be honest, has not really been that kind of player to warrant upwards of $4 million. However, Gaia also says that the deal should be signed before the end of the week, and that the Montreal Canadiens expect him to slot beside Jeff Petrie on the second pair. So, with the way this has been shaping up, what we have here is a top four of the Montreal Canadiens that looks like Sherratt, Weber, Edmondson, Petrie, and then where do you go from here? Because if you take a look at the pieces that the Canadiens have, for next season, you have Carl Alsner, who is going to be under contract. Okay, you're not going to play him in the NHL. That's just not going to happen. But you also have Brett Kulak, you have Alexander Romanov, and you have Victor Mete, who is an RFA. You also have Xavier Ouellette, who is an RFA too. So... There's a big debate as to what's going to go on here with these Canadiens D-men. Weber, Petrie, Sherratt, Kulak, Edmondson, Romanov. That's already six. And then you still have Mete to sign. Not to mention Noah Juleson, who's also included in your roster as well. So now the big question is... What exactly are the Habs going to do? Are we going to see a trade where we move out one of these guys? Because now, if you strictly just include the top four that we already established, Sherratt, Weber, Edmondson, Petrie, you have Romanov in there, and you have Mete, and I guess Juleson, and Kulak too, that's eight D-men. You can't play NHL hockey with eight D-men, you play with six. So we'll see what ends up happening with the Canadians, because if you want to go the route of, okay, we can maybe have these guys just being healthy scratches on the team. I don't know really if there's an opportunity to do that and allow the guys to be satisfied with that. Do you want to say that Alexander Romanov is going to be a guy who spends half of the season in the press box? Probably not. Same thing can be said for Victor Mete, a young guy who is still developing and who still needs time to become better. On the flip side, you have guys like Kulak on the team. You have guys like Noah Juleson on the team. You can say that these guys maybe probably would be able to sit in the press box role, but really, they're capable NHL D-men. Or at least, Juleson is when he is healthy, I'll say that. But how beneficial is it to have these kinds of guys as the ones that you want to play out? In fact, it's difficult to even assess the entire situation as a whole, because if you want to keep Sherratt, Weber, Petrie, Edmondson, there's going to be other things that need to be done. You don't want to get Romanov as the guy to play in the AHL. The entire reason he even came to the NHL was because he wanted to play in the NHL and not in Laval. Victor Mete is a guy who needs waivers if he gets sent down, bearing a conditioning stint. And this is the kind of guy who, if I think, is going to go on waivers, there's no way this guy goes to the AHL unclaimed. It's Victor Mete. Which is why the big idea here everybody is talking about is whether or not Mete or Kulak are going to be on their way out. Because when it comes to the locks, the top four is locked in. The big two right-handed D-man, yeah, you're not getting rid of those two. Sherratt's a guy who, well, you're not going to get rid of him either. 
He was legitimately pretty good in the playoffs, and honestly, Chirac is somewhat underrated in my opinion in just being able to play hockey properly. Edmondson, the guy they just brought in, they want him to be that number four guy on the left side, so no, you're not getting rid of him. And Alexander Romanov is in an untouchable position because Mark Bergevin has endlessly mentioned time and time again how he believes this is going to be a great player for Montreal. We also have ourselves this quote over here from Habs Chronicle, talking about what Mark Bergevin said earlier on an interview. Mark Bergevin said that he does not need to trade Kulak or Mete. Weber, Petrie, Sherratt, Edmondson, Romanov, Mete, Kulak. That is seven. That is what he needs. Juleson needs waivers to go down, but he doesn't count on him because his health is a wild card. Fleury does not need waivers. So all of a sudden, that's an extra name thrusted into the conversation too. Kale Fleury, a guy who honestly, in my opinion, is a pretty good player and honestly could be an NHL guy next season if you wanted him to. It's just a difficult question as to whether or not you say, okay, this guy's 21 years old, he's developed in the WHL and in the AHL, now it's time to give him another year in the A. In my personal opinion, Fleury's ready now and he would not look out of place if he played in Montreal full-time next year. But, obviously, as a guy who is indeed quote-unquote lower down there on the depth chart, especially as a right-handed guy who is indeed able to go down without waivers, I do see the idea as to why he would not be higher up on the priority list to keep in the NHL. But hey, let's face it, even though Mark Bergevin said that he does not need to trade Mete or Kulak, we still have articles and Montreal media people who are saying, hey, maybe he means he's gonna trade somebody else. Take a look at this article over here on TVA Sports. The Montreal Canadiens, a blockbuster on the horizon? This article talks about the whole situation of the left-handed D-man spot. Edmondson, Chirac, Kulak, and Mete, and Romanov. How there's literally five guys here who play left D. And how Jean-Charles Lajoie believes that one or maybe even two of these guys would be traded in a blockbuster trade that the Habs are going to formulate in the next week. The big name mentioned is Patrick Laine, if a guy like Sherrock could be sent over to Winnipeg in a package. Obviously, that's kind of whack because I get that the Jets need defense, but come on, you got Philly Hinola. Why do you need to trade Laine for Ben Sherrod of all people? It's kind of funny, isn't it? But I do believe there is value in at least considering the idea. Because so many of these guys can be NHL assets. And when it comes to what the Canadians could probably do, hey, you got a whole bunch of assets. Why not package them together with some of the other surplus of things that you have, like draft picks, for example, and go after what Jean-Charles Lajoie is saying the Habs should go after, a big right winger capable of scoring goals. Not putting any names out there, but it's an idea to explore. And when it comes to Mark Bergevin, we all kind of know that this guy is one of the more active GMs in the league. The guy's always wheeling and dealing, trying to get picks, buying low, selling high. He's the good old little gears make the big picture move entirely kind of guy when it comes to his GM moves. So am I doubting the idea of Mark Bergevin going out there and exploring trades? Absolutely not. Everybody loves to bring up the old, oh, he said he wouldn't trade Subban and then he traded Subban thing. But that's kind of just what Bergevin does. The guy is always out there looking for a deal, and if anybody out there is looking for a capable NHL defender, then Montreal's got a surplus of them now that may not even have a spot in the lineup. Romanov is all but guaranteed, but we know that the Habs are going to play this guy in Montreal. That's just how it's going to be. So, the rest of the lineup, Mete, Kulak, Ulek, Juleson, we may see some of these guys go, we may see some of them stay. Some of them do have contracts, others don't, like Victor Mete, which is kind of why he's been in this discussion too. He's been the guy that everybody has been kind of throwing the ball around as to who could be traded in Montreal or not. But, again, just like the Vancouver Canucks, like we talked about yesterday in their video, we will know pretty much everything by the time this week is over, because once free agency kicks off in a few weeks here, that's when things are really going to be kind of set in stone. And it's going to be when these teams actually start to wheel and deal in pretty much scrambling mode, because they wouldn't have been able to get their things done earlier on. So, talk to me in the comments what you think about this whole idea. 
Mete, Kulak, one of them on the move or not, Edmondson as a legitimate top four guy in the Montreal Canadiens organization alongside of Sherratt, Weber, and Petrie. How does Romanov come into all of this? And assuming he is the fifth D-man, who exactly takes up that sixth spot? Do you play Mete on the right side? Do you play Kulak there? Do you play Juleson there despite him getting hurt all the time? Or do you call up a guy who does not need waivers to go down to Laval, thus making him a much more valuable piece in a Kale Flurry? There's a lot of questions over here, but I want to hear what you think in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this video. That is Ross 99, and bye. <laughs>